is that we have the end in mind of where a professional golfer would be. I'm gonna say, by the time the hands are relatively level with the ground, by here, it's gonna be in front. All right, dude, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that we see in the golf swing is the finish position, right? Yes. Let's say the majority of golfers out there that are struggling with their ball striking, they are pull slices of the golf ball. And one of the definitive uh, effects of that that we see with players is they wrap themselves up like a pretzel over here. This lead arm is pulled around the side of their body. The lead wrist is very cupped. Yep we can see that they're very over-rotated in this orientation here. Now, the golf club also tends to sometimes be vertical rather than where you would see the pro, a lot more structured with the hands and arms in front and the club shaft a little bit more, let's say down their back line, right? right. Now, I find that a lot of players get into this position because they see their favorite golfer, let's just say Rory as an example, they get into this beautiful big rotated finish like this. Right. Now, that is very different to that. Correct. And the timing of that is also very different. Now, right. I want you to talk about the sequence of what happens from impact into the follow through. And then we're gonna talk about a little drill that we were discussing before, about how to kind of feel like the hands are a little bit more in front of the chest by that follow through. Absolutely, and I, and I love this too, because it ties into what we talked about earlier in a previous video about keeping the relationship between the grip and the belt line constant. And yeah. we had you stand up vertically, turn to your left, yeah. Keep that relationship, tilt to the right. And you can see that my hands and arms are in front of my body. Mm -hmm. They would never be over here. They're right here in front of my body. Now all I have to do is let my elbows fold, the hands sort of work up towards my lead shoulder, and boom, now I'm in that nice position where that lead arm gets into that external rotation. It's not all out here up in front of, you know, the elbow's not up in front of my, my left ear all up in this direction and I'm not all crossed up. So it's a nice tie in to that drill we were doing earlier. And all we have to do is say, let's keep that going a little bit further. And now we've got that nice follow through position. Now, sometimes as you know, that can be a effect of the cause, which is that player coming way steep. Correct. And then naturally they got nothing else to do but yank that arms and club across their body. And it's not like they're meaning to do that, but it's just what has to happen. The momentum of the club is gonna take them into that position. So mm. we're building off of all the things we've talked about with those nice takeaway pieces, the trail palm there at impact, and then keeping that nice relationship mm -hmm. there up into the follow through, keeping the hands in front of the chest. And again, working on the follow through side of the swing, which a lot of people just take for granted, mm. but we see good players practicing all the way into that follow through. I don't see enough players and I prescribe this to my students. Hey, hit me that follow through position. Just hang out here for 30 seconds. Hold it until the ball lands rather than going, oh, I hit the shot, grab another one. Right, exactly. <laughs> so much can be learned from if I just took stock of hanging here and going, what am I doing? What, what's this all about? Yeah. I could probably tell you what happened back here. Big time. By just you sitting right here versus a player who looks like this, I'd go, ooh, that downswing and impact probably looked pretty good. Yeah. One of my favorite sort of analogies to use, right, is like, let's say that we're throwing a ball, right? You've got a young child and let's say you're going to teach them how to throw a ball. And the first time they pick it up, they throw it, everything's going down into the ground. Right right? And for whatever reason, they're trying to throw straight, but the ball's going straight down on the ground. Now, there's two ways you can approach this. You could go, well, the pitch of your trail arm as you go back, and then the flex of that trail wrist is then you, so you shift in transition, your pressure goes forward, you're staying too much in flexion, you're releasing towards this apex, right? right? Or you could say, point to where you want the ball to go. Right. Now, what happens in a relative learning capacity is that with the end in mind, yes. your body then works on the process to fit within that. Right Now, we see a lot of players, they work on the complexities of, let's get this shallow, let's get this bowed, let's get the club head behind the hands, let's pivot this body into this perfect position. Then all, before we know it, they're just contorting themselves into an orientation, which in the 0.25 of a second of the downswing, right. there's just absolutely no chance they're gonna recreate it. So just using the throwing analogy for us, is that we have the end in mind of where a professional golfer would be, I'm gonna say, by the time the hands are relatively level with the ground, right? right by here, it's gonna be in front. Now, we're not gonna see them 
over here with a professional. So even just going, well, if I'm an amateur golfer, I'm struggling with a chicken wing and I fix my club face, so we've got a better chance of hitting it straight. Right. Just practicing getting to here and then going, well, a pro from this position, like you said, yep. would then refold the arms yep. and then they would get this golf club almost moving to the outcome if you get this golf club and touch your left trap. Right. Now, a lot of players, when they do this, they're gonna feel like they're body is facing over here. Right. It's mainly because they're so used to wrapping themselves up into this degree. Good point. But if I do that again, right, and I love creating this visual for players, if I go and get this golf club just hinging up and touching my left trap like this, I push my hips forward and up, and then I just lightly push my arms away, that looks like a follow. Correct, yeah. exactly. So that, picture and that image starts to create an understanding that the hands stay relatively in front of the body as we keep talking about. In the backswing, the body's the engine, the hands are in front, we create a bit of hinge, we move forward, we push and extend, they stay relatively in front. And then this refolding is essentially just an effect at the end, just as a product of speed. Right. Of speed too, but of also of lack of tension. Yeah. Right. Very important. So if we're supple, if we're relaxed, as we talked about earlier, not trying to keep this lead arm super straight, but instead using that trail palm to push the club away, that creates some more relaxed environment here. And that again, allows that player to have that gentle folding of those elbows. We need to be relaxed. We need to be free of tension in order for these things to happen naturally. I believe a lot of these awesome things will happen byproduct wise of being tension free, being relaxed and not trying to force the golf swing to happen, right? Mm. At the end of the day, the golf swing is a turn. We place that club over that trail shoulder. We brush the ground and we place that club over that lead shoulder, right? So we can complicate it as much as we want, but if we can get that simplistic idea in our minds, then we create this holistic picture, right? The golf swing isn't just a backswing and then impact and then it's a blackout and we don't know what happened, <laughs> right? There's a reason why Rory hits that finish. I yeah. think he's probably practiced it a time or two. Yeah, he probably knows the knows <laughs> thing about shooting a low score too, right? So. Yeah, exactly. What, what I think is, is a great drill for players just to work on is getting the understanding of getting this golf club from here and touching that lead trap. Yes. And that might seem like a really weird rain dance to do before you hit a shot. <laughs> but see, what this does allow you to do, if I'm just reminding myself here, as I then follow through that I can actually go ahead and do that, right. well, all of a sudden with my finished position, I'm in the perfect spot. Exactly. Where is if I practice this, Right. which is pushing and breakdown structure of the arms, and then I turn, well, that's where the majority of amateur golfers who are really, really struggling with their ball striking, hands low and left, yep. club really hasn't created any sort of this leverage and hinge, but it's such an easy way to go there. It's like, okay, I know that I need to finish it with close to my left trap. How do I get there? Right. Little backswing, try and touch the left trap. Well, all of a sudden, you know, I start to get this long, flowing, beautiful Fred Couple swing. Right where the golf club is tending to be a little bit more in front of me and the club shaft down my back rather than pushed out over to the left. And I love how you just did that. You know, you know how to coach and you know how to teach players and you do this intuitively, but you did this a few times. Then you went to here a few times and then you blended it in. You didn't try to do it 90% right? You yeah. broke it down, you mapped it out. You let your mind chew on it. You let it marinate a little bit. And then you did it from impact onward because we we will build out the backswing to match the follow through as well. Sometimes as you alluded to, starting with the end in mind, if I'm gonna throw a ball this way, mm -hmm. I know my hand has to end up at the camera. Therefore, I'm gonna take my hand here to go there versus out here, reroute to there. Now I could get good at that, mm -hmm. but it would take me longer than just this. Someone's bombing down there. <laughs> Versus, so if I know I'm gonna get here, it would make sense for me to get there, and now I've got this nice, beautiful rhythmic swing. So yeah. starting with the end in mind is always such a nice thing that people forget about. We do have a forward side of the golf swing. Yeah, I, I think it's just certainly one of those things that it's, once again, it's it's hard for players at home when they work on themselves 
to get this wrong. If you just think about this club shaft in the follow through, if you're easily able to just get it touching your left trap, bounce off that left trap, do a couple of practice swings. And I would say everyone watching this, next time you go out to the practice range, just give it a little backswing follow through. Can you touch a trap with relative ease without moving your whole arms and hand structure and everything around? And then when you hit a shot, go to about that 50% speed Bounce it off the left, and within reason, we can see ball went straight, hands relatively in front. Mate, I think it's one of those drills everyone at home that can work on. Love it.